Hi, today is my first episode of Friday Souls, a chat about sewing and what your week has been like. And if that's something you're interested in, please stay tuned. Hi, lovely people. Welcome to my channel. It is Josie. Josie here and I'm glad to have you here. And welcome to my channel for those who are new here, for my new subscribers. You're welcome and for my old subscribers, thank you for always tuning in and tagging along. And recently I started recording a weekly roundup of sew and tell, telling you about what I've sewed up during the week and what I plan to sew up. And unfortunately I must apologize, I've not been consistent with that because life has been happening with homeschooling. So the best news that I've received this week is that school opens in a week's time so I'll finally get my children back into school. I've got a 10 year old and a 6 year old so they've been keeping me pretty much busy having an all around school day of 9 to 3 o'clock so that left very little time to sew however I've been up to some and some have been long term projects and I'm happy to share with them with you and I realized because I wasn't keeping consistent with the fried with a sew and tell weekly and I wasn't also so sure of which days I could dedicate to recording the video so I decided to join the hashtag which is Friday Source, organized by Jen from Today in the Sewing Room and she invited a few other sewing bloggers to join in so we have a hashtag running that people who are interested in hearing about sewing can follow that hashtag and see whatever each person participating is up to and I thought I'll join in because there's no harm in doing that and I share with you what I've been sewing. If you always watch my videos, you know that Love Notions has recently launched their new pattern this week. That was two days ago. That's a Metro Blazer. And also if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I'm an ambassador with Love Notions patterns. So I tend to sew up with quite many of their patterns. I've sold up most of them. And I was fortunate to also patent test this particular one. And do I love this pattern? Yes, I do, and I've actually recorded a pattern review video. I will attach the links in the cards here that I don't take into the details of the pattern and what it's about, but it's just a brief description about the pattern. It's a blazer, but made out of jazzy fabrics, no non-jazzy, stable knit fabrics. And if you're anything like me, you don't want to fidget around fitting. So the other option, most blazers are made out of open fabrics and you have to go in fit then line it it's a wonderful blazer with neat finishing on the inside and i made both my versions not both this was my pattern test piece the first one and this was my final one however this is not complete and i made them out of pointy fabric i'm going to just show you a few pictures but if you want to hear all about it i'll attach the card to the video up here and also in the description box below so you can hear about it basically stable knit blazer recommended for other stable knits you can use liverpool fabric i've not come across that you can use scubas and i use ponte for mine and i happen to have this burnt orange ponte fabric i've had in my stash for a while and it has a, a weld pocket which is less complicated than the usual and then it's fitted, it has a back seam which helps with fitting in the back. I won't go into details about this and also for this particular one I color blocked it. I used just big pieces of pointy yard in my stash. So I didn't have enough of the green, no did I have enough of the blue. But it actually added a good effect to it if you can tell. This is not yet complete, I've not yet hemmed them. And actually I think that's all that I have to do with this. I thought I'll show you how many options it offers and you can watch that video to know exactly what it's about and it offers such a neat finish on the inside if you can tell you don't have raw edges and I didn't have to line anything and it also has a big pocket and the pocket bag is created by the lining and I used a different color for the lining and I won't go into detail about this but I will attach the link to the I'll attach the link in the description box below for the video and also if you would want to pick up the pattern I'll at attach my affiliate link in the description box below you're not under any obligation to use it but if you use it it's a way of supporting this channel and my other projects I'm working on which is taking longer than it should be are my first pair of jeans and I've been talking about them 
the process i've been talking about the jeans i'm sewing on my channel this whole month the whole of january but i've not showed you anything because they're not yet complete it's a slow project i'm not rushing it and if you've been on instagram you might have heard of jeans january it was a sewing get together i saw a long of sewing something i could call it of ladies who came together wanted to sew jeans and you they thought it would be nice to sew it as a group you give each other motivation it was organized by some three ladies from Huddersfield who came together and invited other ladies who wanted to sew jeans and we used to meet up often on zoom weekly for for the first for january and the first two weeks of february where we talked about our progress we had another platform called slack where we moderate where the conversations were taking place where people shared their tips and what they were up to and i'm sewing up the mega nielsen ash jeans and i'm going for the skinny legs and this is the how far i've gotten i have my zipper on and I have the back pockets on too. There we go. I actually like the top stitching. I didn't want to show you things that are half baked, but also the most exciting things are these pocket bags. And I use some leftover fabric from some Minova project I made either a year or two years ago. And I've sold the middle seam, the crotch seam, and I have the side to go and attaching the and attaching the waistband. So it's an exciting project. I'm happy to come and tell you about it as time goes on. Probably next week. I can't promise, but very soon it will be done. I'll have the jeans ready and I hope they will fit as good as I expect them to. Because I did a lot of fitting on the twirl and I'm hoping everything is will reflect really well. And I used some denim I've had in my stash for a while. I remember I think about it two years ago, three years ago, and I bought loads of it about five meters because i was that ambitious and i thought that was the year i was going to sew my first pair of jeans but i was glad to have been on that group because it has motivated me actually to come out of my comfort zone i feel like it was more like an accountability place to push myself and also another exciting thing about these jeans i received this this was gifted to me by laura the spec is seamstress if you've seen her on instagram she has she sells bias tape this can be seen and she gifted me this leather patch which will be going on to the jeans genuine leather and i'll be attaching it to my jeans on the worst part you know those patches i know these don't have any patches but yeah i think you've seen them it's really it's made by me and i thought this would really be a nice thing to attach on my first pair of me made jeans and in, and she'll be stocking more of these in her shop i'm not so sure 100 percent sure whether they are in already but if they are i'm going to attach the link to them in the description box below so if you're interested in a, some of this well and good and sewing wise i've realized i'm not sewing a lot anyway i could say I've, i was in the middle of a pattern testing process where you take off about two weeks to come up with a final project so that has kept me busy then on top of my whole day taken up by by my home school and then the jeans that are a slow project but i would rather not rush it because once i perfect my first pair i'll be able to do a lot more and sew more pair of jeans because i've always struggled to find a fitting pair of jeans the only shop that i've been fortunate to find a pair has been gap and i've also had to return so many jeans to gap when they don't fit right so i literally own two pairs of jeans that fit me well and i'm happy with so with me trying to sew my first pair and if this is well i would never need to buy any more jeans i'll be making them and then something else this is not sewing but it's something crafty and it's knitting i purpose last year to teach myself to knit and i could say growing up we learned to crochet everybody around my circle learned to crochet i grew up in africa so that was the most crafty thing we did it was easy i just needed a whole and yarn and that was it it was cheap it was easy to do so all the girls growing up when i was about i think eight nine i learned to crochet and we did a lot of that and as it happens we always want to learn the other thing that we don't know so i told i told our purpose to learn to knit last year and when the lockdown hit in the summer i picked up a scarf and I picked up this pattern from Ravelry. 
it's a platform where people share their knitting and uh, knitting projects knitting patterns some are for sale and some are free patterns and i picked up this pattern it was a free pattern of a scarf which i made for my daughter and it features some cables you can tell i was chuffed about all this and i'd never so knitted anything really this was my first knitted project and i was so excited and chuffed with myself it features those cables and it's an open i'll try to attach a link to this scarf pattern if you're interested and an image of what it's supposed to look like but i made it for my daughter who is six it's an easy one to wear and she doesn't have to wrap it around her neck so it has this opening that you fix it through i was actually excited about this and shortly after i picked up another project not shortly after at, at the start of this year i told myself that i need a project for lockdown so this is my second knitting project and i'm calling it my lockdown throw and here we go i'm actually excited with this project because it's coming together really well and if you're wondering what this pattern is and this pattern came from the knit now pattern magazine it's a, ma a magazine subscription in the uk and this particular one is a little magazine within the magazine i could say this is a pattern sheet and i'm knitting the box set blanket and this is what it's supposed to look like ideally they call it box set a blanket you use in your couch throw in your sofa when you're watching something and let me show you what it looks like and this is what the blanket is supposed to look like hope the image does it justice and that's what i'm knitting and i'm actually excited that it's coming together pretty well and also for that same part when i've got that magazine it also came with these cable needles and i think their size their size no their size 10 mil millimeters and this particular one is not knitted in the round unfortunately or fortunately because it's such a big project if you can tell from the bottom it can be put they realize that putting it on straight needles you will need pretty long needles so the cable within if you can tell if you know what cable needles are helps keep the project all on on to one set of needle i could say on to one because it's a cable one so the opening is on the side so it's a project i started in january yes i'm not rushing it because i don't feel like i have enough time to knit but i pick it up only when i have a few minutes to spare in the middle of something pick it up or a few times when i'm in homeschool or when i feel less motivated to do anything i pick it up so i'm not going to rush it but i'm happy it's going to be my lockdown three project but i love the designs that it features if you can tell it's a gorgeous one however i noticed that i made a few mistakes earlier on around here i saw this cable i don't know if you can tell these cables are should i call them cables stitches i repeated three times as opposed to the two times as below so i was under the impression if you can tell the difference between here and here i was under them i was thinking whether to undo it and stitch it again but i was like no i've come this far because i think i had to cast on about 19 sti 94 stitches if i undo it i'll be undoing about 94 times three stitches so I realize that's too much to do so i'm going to ignore it hope it won't bother me because i'm that kind of person who easily gets bothered by something that didn't go right <laughs> i stopped calling myself a perfectionist but you know what i'm talking about but i think i'll ignore it what would you do would you undo it and knit again from that point where you will ignore it since it's just a throw blanket and not a jump i'm going to wear and i'm actually excited so i got these needles with a magazine which was a perfect and then i also picked up these big balls of yarn i think each is about 400 grams and i picked them up from my local supermarket that's aldi this time they had a sale and the and that time i happened to pick up two of them so it's about the total came to about 80 800 grams of yarn and i happened to pick up two so one has covered this entire bit i just have very little to spare and then probably by the time this 
gets finished i should be done but if i'm not i'll just cast off at that point i'm really excited about it because i only bought two balls and i'm excited with the progress i'm making and the fact that it's my it's my second project i guess no one is going to stop me i'll always purpose to have a knitting project going regardless of how long i take knitting it and i should say <laughs> that's my first episode of Friday sews where you chat about sewing and what your week is about. So my week, the exciting news that kids are going to go back to school, so I'm going to get my time back, which is exciting. I love them, but sometimes I want them away for a bit so I can love them more. And thank you for watching. If you've watched through this video and you're not subscribed to my channel and you want to hear what I'm always up to here, please subscribe and while at it, please press the bell icon so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a new video. And thank you for watching. Until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.